like all of us, as, as you sort of looked over the past few years before the pandemic, businesses were growing, it was great, we were getting bigger. And naturally, I think with some of that growth, you sort of lose focus of what the core of each of the brands were about, right? Where are we focusing? Where do we want to make our big bets? And so for us, it was really about how do we refocus on like the core of what we want to be doing and where we want the business to go. You know, we were at a spot where we needed to you know, kind of evolve some of the way we were doing things internally. You know, going through the pandemic, that reset happened in a way that was probably a bit easier and faster than it would have been otherwise. Obviously, the downside is, you know, we're all still dealing with supply chain challenges and, you know, the, the world fundamentally has, has just changed. It's just different now. So from a, a revenue standpoint, it was the worst possible time to, you know, come in and, you know, but we've, we've recovered. The benefit of being part of a big company and being owned by a company like Samsung is they can make the decision to say, yep, we understand there's gonna be a tremendous drop in your top line, but keep going on R&D, keep going on product investment. And so we didn't cut a penny in engineering the whole way through. And that's what you're seeing. I mean, all the, the new stuff, the Mac Ultras, those are, those are expensive programs, expensive developments, but we kept through the whole way through the pandemic, never doubted the industry would come back. So we, we kept spending the whole way through, which I think uh, from that standpoint, you know, as we sit here now, it's a good feeling that, okay, that it was the right call. You know, because we have such a broad portfolio, we could keep the things that were relevant, you know, through the pandemic going, and, and we saw a lot of growth and things like USB mics and, and some of our work from home and recording products. But, you know, it didn't shift our roadmap. It really just, like I said before, it focused us back on, you know, where do we want to be coming out of this? Because we saw that growth in some of those areas as just a blip. And in some of the areas where we were behind or maybe there was a gap, we were able to catch up because we never stopped investing through that time. APAC as a, as a whole is really important to our business. Yes, there are unique pieces to it. You know, I think some of the you know, specifics about the region, you know, that's something for us to lead into and, and I think we can add value in those spaces. But there's also a big piece of it that is very similar to the rest of our global business. So I think being here, having a local team, you know, being interactive within those markets is really important for us. As you mentioned, we've seen a ton of growth in this region and we'll continue to invest heavily here in APAC. In my role now, I, I always live five years into the future, right? That's kind of how we, we work on five-year plans. I've got a, a pretty simple vision for this is kind of know, know who you are and know what you're good at, right? Know what value we provide to our customers. So fundamentally, we'll be an audio, video, and lighting company, right? That's where we're continuing to invest. Technology evolves, products can change a little bit, but. Fundamentally, that, that's who we are now and that's what we'll be then too.